All right, welcome back. This probably will be the last little tutorial on this subject. We've been looking at Sapphic stanza, and uh, in the first couple of lectures, I've just talked about the stanza per se, and now we're looking at Catullus 51. <clears throat> I asked you to practice the first stanza, the first four lines there. So let's see what we have. Il a mi paresse de obedetur, il a si fases superare divos, qui sedens ad versus identidem de spectatit audit. All right, now let's uh, go on to try, try some more. Remember, if you've got that meter in your in your soul, so to speak, if it's under your skin, the only uh, syllable that's going to give you any difficulty will be the fourth, because that is uh, the and caps right here. See, that could be short or long. Now it looks like you know so far all of them have been long in uh, Catullus. So I'll tell you what I'll do in the next three sets. I'm going to put in the whether the vowel is long by nature. If it's followed by two consonants or if it's a diphthong, you don't need to know whether it's long by nature because it's going to scan long. All right, so let's just uh, read this down. Okay, du keri, that's, that's going to scan long by position. Eripit sane, that's going to scan long by position. Les be as, now don't forget that these, uh, the A and the, the two A's are going to be lied, so you're going to end up with Let's be us. So, because the remaining syllable is followed by two consonants, it's going to be long by position. There you go. Let's be us, Beck, C. Let's go on. Ling. Sorry, Ling, Gua. That's going to be uh, treated as one syllable. Ling, Gua, said. So, there's your fourth, and it's long by position. Flama, now. There you go. Flama. Flamma de. This you need to know whether it's long by nature or by uh, whether it's long by nature or whether it's going to scan short. And the answer is it is long by nature. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there for you. Oh, blast. Uh, there. Flamma de. And that's that's the the e is going to have to be long by nature because in the metrical scheme. The third syllable is always going to be long, or scanned long. So there has to be some explanation for why it's scanned long. And so you can deduce, therefore, that that has to be a long E, even before you look it up. Did you follow that? If you look at the um, metrical pattern, the third foot, or third foot, the third, third syllable is always long. So no matter what is there, it's going to be long. And if there's not an explanation for its being long by position or because it's a diphthong, then it must be long by nature. Okay. Tin, tin, not aur. There's a diphthong, so that is accounts for why it's long. So how about this? Otium. Now this, you don't know whether it's long or short, and you need to um, look it up. Or just remember that the A of Catullus's name is short. Short by nature. Okay. OTX SUL, and that's going to be long by position. And then OTX, and that's long by position because it's followed by an R. Now, when the second consonant is an R or an L, the poet has a, the choice whether to make that the preceding syllable long or short. And in this case, he chooses to make it long. Okay. Enough. So put me on pause, all right? And um, now, that you, now that you are experienced um, analysts of sapphic meter, um, do it on your own. Put me on, put me on pause. Do it on your own. And then come back, and then we'll read through it together, okay? So start with the first, for, for this next, start with this next four lines. Okay, so what do you have? Here's what I have. Dut keri den tem misor o quod omnis. Dul keri den tem misor o quod omnis. How about the next one? Eripit sen. That was terrible. Eripit 
sensus mihi nam simulte. <laughs> Eripit. Where did I get that? Eripit sensus mihi nam simulte. Next line. Got the elision. Les bi aspexi nihil est super mi. And then the next um, line is it, it's lost in the manuscript, but it's been reconstructed and it fits really well. Vocus in ore. Okay, next four. Same thing. Put me on pause, try to figure it out, and then come back. Lingua seb tor petenuisubartos. Again. Lingua sed tor pet. Tenuis subartus, flama de mantat sonitu suopte, suopte, su opte. So that's short, long, long. Flama de mantat sonitu suopte. Next, tin tinant our race. Gemina te guntur lumine nocte. Tintinant aur reis gemina te guntur lumine nocte. And then the final. Otium catule tibi molestes. Oh, that was terrible. Sorry, I was looking out the window at a squirrel. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that again for you. Otium catul tibi molestes. Why am I having so much difficulty with that? Otium catul tibi molestes. I know why, because all the other lines, the fourth foot, ha fourth syllable has been uh, long. Now we, we could go back to the original. Otium catul tibi. Oteum catule tibi molestes. Then, oti exultas nimium quegestis. Tis. Oti exultas nimium quegestis. Oti ex reges prius et beatas perdere turpes. All right, there you go. Um, you are now ready to um, scan and, and read sapphic stanzas um, on your own. I may, if I practice enough, I may post uh, my reading of this entire poem. But there are others out there on, on YouTube which are going to do a much better job than I could ever do. So I'll put a, I'll, I'll find one, I'll put a link to it in the uh, description of this lecture. So there you go. I hope that was helpful.